I think the main reason was probably uh, what we were hearing from the business. The business was asking HR to be more strategic, to be providing that uh, um, strategic view at the, at the top teams, um, making sure that the HR strategy was aligned and supporting the business strategy. So that was, that was critical, that's what we heard. Um, there was, to be fair, there was also a cost driver, so we were also looking at reducing the overall HR costs in the business. We were coming from uh, an HR structure, an HR model that was very um, siloed. We had embedded teams, HR teams, in each of the business areas. They were running very autonomously. They rarely spoke to each other. And as a consequence, we were doing a lot of duplication of work, a lot of reinventing the wheel in the different business groups. We, we, we created a model which consists of um, embedded HR business partners, a thin layer of embedded HR business partners, and we've centralised most of the rest of HR. We started on our consultation journey back in 2009, at the end of 2009, and went live with a new model in 2010, in the middle of 2010. So we're roughly 18 months in, and it's evolving all of the time. Uh, the HR, the centralised HR groups now consist uh, in the main of a transactional team that, that's uh, very focused on letter generation and data administration, etc., uh, and an HR manager team where we do the added value but operational work, leaving the senior HR business partners free to do strategy. I think one of our biggest challenges was uh, getting the line managers engaged, helping them to understand what this transformation journey would mean for them. So um, we came from a, a model that was very relationship based, where every line manager knew the name of their HR manager, and we moved to a model that's very centralised. So H, uh, line managers are accessing HR through a single point of contact, and that's been difficult for them. We have done a lot around communication. Um, we've tried to put roadshows in place. We've created flyers and brochures and handouts and when we go and present to a, to a line management team we'll leave them with, with materials that they can take away. Uh, we have also realised that there is probably a need for us to do something for new people. So as new, new employees come into the company or as new managers are appointed or promoted we recognise that they won't know how HR works in GSK. So we have a, we have a new programme that we're just about to put in place to um, build into the orientation and induction program that exists and help people understand this is how you access HR in GSK and this is what HR can provide for you. The biggest benefit that we're seeing is that we've got much more standardization now, much greater consistency in the services that we're offering. So uh, line managers across, uh, across different business groups will get a standard HR service, which means we only, we only invent things once and we have one approach to restructuring, one approach to consultation. Um, as a consequence of that, we're seeing reduction in costs. I think from, a, from an HR point of view, particularly the HR manager population, have seen um, that their roles have got broader. They've got, they, that instead of being focused in one part of the business and spending, say, 15 years working in, in HR, in R&D, they're now getting to support uh, all sorts of different line managers across all different business areas and they're really relishing the opportunity to see a much broader spectrum of business activity. I think next for GSK, as I said, it, we've evolved over the last 18 months. GSK ha has embarked on the creation of a global business services group uh, and what that means for HR is that, is that uh, the, the, the real transactional and administrative uh, components of HR activity are being moved into a global business services team. Uh, we are still early in the journey there, but that, that's going to continue. I think the other thing is we set up in-country service teams, so we centralised HR services within, within countries, and the next challenge for us is how do we make that a, a regional service or even a global service? How do we take that, that operational HR and, and chunk it up? I think if I could do it all again, what, we, what I would do differently is spend a lot more time up front engaging the line managers. Lots more around the, the, the change management and communication side of the programme of the journey. Um, we did a lot, but we could have done so much more, and that would be my key learning.
I think the question that I would like answered is where do you draw the line for business partners? So how far down in the organisation do you go with your business partners? I think, I think at the senior levels it, it's very clear. Um, the senior business partners are obvious. I think at the, at the transactional and, and administrative level, it's also very clear. But it's that bit in the middle. The HR managers, um, are, they, are they junior business partners or are they part of a shared services group? Um, I think you know, GSK, GSK has centralised them and put them into a, into a shared services team. Uh, but I'd be very interested in knowing what other companies have done. So how do they provide support for a major change program, a big restructuring? Uh, how do they go about coaching line managers? Is it shared services work or is it business partnering work?